Hi guys, this video is going to cover section 2.8, which is continuity. <clears throat> okay, and this begins on page 140, FYI. And the definition of, well, the criterion for count continuity um, is given here. So, <clears throat> you know, when we think of continuity, or whether or not a function is continuous, we think of a nice, smooth, unbroken, no holes kind of a curve or function. Okay? So, there are, there are differences in that, and we're going to talk about that in a second, but in order for a function to be continuous, it has to meet these three criterion. Okay? So, this theorem, I sort of rewrote a little bit on the paper um, to get rid of the technicalities. Okay? So a function is continuous at a point x equals to a, so at some particular point along it. So, you know, it could be this point, or this point, or this point, or there are infinitely many points on this function we'll call f here. Okay? Um, and so, you know, it could be any point. x equals, you know, 1, or x equals 2, or x equals 3, or x equals 2.195. Okay? So, um, a function is continuous at a particular point, which we call x equals to a, if these three criteria are met. Number one, the limit has to exist as x approaches that point. So, for instance, if we were trying to figure out, you know, is this function, whatever it is, continuous at x equals to 3, the first criterion is, does the limit exist? Well, that means we have to come in from, the, you know, as x approaches 3 from the left, and as x approaches 3 from the right, and since they're approaching the same height, we would say that the limit existed there. So the, the values would approach the same number from the left and the right on the limit. Okay, the function has to be defined at the point. So in other words, f of 3 is some value, right? Maybe, I don't know, it's 5 or something. So uh, f of a, the function, has to be defined at that point. In other words, there can't be a hole there, okay? Or it can't be necessarily broken. Um, and then the limit, whatever that limit value is, it has to equal the function output value at that point. Okay, so I put on here C example on page 40 because this is what I projected in class. So here's an example of a function and at the point x equals to a, if I take the limit from the left and right, I can see that the height is the same, so the limit exists. Okay, there are no holes or breaks in this and in fact f of a is some value, you know, maybe this is 6 or 12 or whatever, okay? So, um, if this were the point 3, maybe, you know, f of 3 is 4 or whatnot. So, the function output value, or the height of the function, when x equals to a, is the same as the limit. It's the same height, okay? So, that's good, and the point is defined. So, we would consider this to be a nice, smooth, continuous function. Here, the limit exists from the left and the right. We have a hole there, but it's still approaching the same value. The function is defined at a. It's whatever this height is right here. However, the limit of the function is not equal to the function output value. So maybe, you know, the limit here is 4 and this is 5. Okay, so in this case here, the limit exists, but it does, it's not equal to the functions uh, evaluated at that point a. And in the third case, we have a break in the graph. And right away, you can see the limit from the left doesn't even equal to the limit on the right, so the limit doesn't exist. The function is defined right here, okay? It's not defined here, but it's defined here at A, so it does have definition. Um, and certainly the limit um, is not going to equal that output. So because the limit doesn't even exist, we would say the function is discontinuous at point A. Likewise, we would say this one's discontinuous at A, or this one would be a continuous function, okay? This is that removable discontinuity. If I could pick up that little point and put it in that hole, then this would look like that one, right? So this is a removable discontinuity, and this one's a non-removable discontinuity. And, you know, how you can figure these out algebraically is you're going to have some kind of rational expression. So maybe something like at the bottom of this page here. Forget the fact that this is piecewise, but let's just focus on this. This is a rational expression. It's a polynomial divided by a polynomial. And the numerator here is factorable, 
to x plus 2x minus 2. So I could remove that discontinuity by canceling out the x minus 2's and then I would just be dealing with x plus 2 and then it's no longer discontinuous. All right. So um, anyway, just keep that in mind. What else is here? Oh yes. And I think I forgot to mention this in block 5, so this will be good to know. Um, now, we're talking about endpoints here, or continuity on an interval. Okay, There's a function continuous over an interval. And, you know, if I'm thinking about, say, this half circle here, you know, I can take the limit from the right as x approaches negative 2, but I can't take it from the left. And if I try to take the limit as x approaches 2, well, I can't come in from the right, but I can come in from the left and get a value of 0. So the idea is, is that we say a function is continuous over a closed interval, meaning endpoints included, if it is continuous at every number in the open interval. So meaning every number in between those endpoints, okay? And we call these, we call these one-sided limits. Um, so the limit as x approaches a from the right, so maybe this is a here. If I approach it from the right, it's 0, and f of 2 is 0, so they're equivalent, right? And likewise, over here, I could say the limit as x approaches, we'll call this one b, from the left. I can't come in from the right, there is no graph there. But if I come in from the left, toward that endpoint, the limit is 0 from the left, and f of 2 is 0, so they're equivalent. So when that happens, we can say that it's you know right continuous or left continuous, depending on which du direction we're going. You're not going to come across these too often, but you may see one, or you might see these terms right continuous or left continuous, so you should know what they mean. All right. Now there's some other things in this section which I told the kids today. I teach them all together, and that's the intermediate value theorem, the mean value theorem, and the extreme value theorem. So, um, you know, the next theorem is the IVT or the intermediate value theorem. Just, you know, don't just go past it for right now. We'll get to it. Okay, on page 144, there is a very important theorem. It says if a function f has a derivative at a point, x equals to a, then the function is continuous at that point. Now the converse of this is not true. I can't say if a, if a function is continuous at a point, then the derivative exists, because if you think about the absolute value function, right? I mean, this thing is continuous. The limit exists, right? Zero. F of zero is defined, and the limit equals that. But the problem is, is we have this cusp, right? So the derivative is, exists all the way on this side, all the way on this side, but at that cusp, it's not going to happen. There's going to be no derivative at, po at corners or cusps. So, this is very important because if the function has a derivative at a point, then we can say it's continuous at the point. But if the function is continuous at a point, like this one, at x equals to zero, we can't necessarily say that the derivative will exist at that point. Okay? And a good example is at the bottom of page 144. This one right here, we have a cusp or a corner. The limit exists at x equals to a. f of a is defined. The limit equals the function output value at a. But the problem is there's a corner there. So if you look at the solution down here, it says f is continuous but not differentiable. At the cusp, the slopes of the secant lines approach different numbers from the left and the right. So, Ella, stop. Sorry. Sorry. Whenever she hears like the Amazon truck, she goes insane, so sorry about that. In this case here, the limit exists, the function is defined, but the function output value is not equal to the limit. So it's not continuous and it's not differentiable at that point. Okay? It fails the criterion for, for con continuity, and it's definitely not going to be differentiable at that point because it's not continuous at that point. And finally at the break, you know, here, we're focusing on the break right away, but you see the point that's in question is here. Well, the limit exists, the function is defined, and the output value of the function equals that limit. So, this function is continuous at A, and it's... I'm sorry. Ella! Stop! 
Oh, gosh, she's insane. Um, and uh, so, sorry, the this function is continuous at A, it's differentiable at A, and this break over here has nothing to do with the behavior at this point at A. Or the behavior of my dog. So, I went over this example, which is number two. It's from the exercises, page 145, because you're going to have a couple of these graphs. So let me just zoom out of here a little bit so I can get some more questions in here. So it says, you know, let f be a function whose graph is shown. Use the graph to answer the questions. So question A, is f continuous from negative 4 to 4? And hopefully you would say no. No, it's not. We would say it's discontinuous at x is equal to negative 1. Why? Because the limit doesn't exist, right? The limit from the left does not equal the limit to the right, therefore the limit doesn't exist. So right away the limit doesn't exist there. Here, I would say there's a problem at x equals to 1 because while the limit exists and while the function is evaluated, f of 1 is negative 1, the limit does not equal, the limit is negative 2 and f of 1 is negative 1, so they're not equivalent, so it's discontinuous there. And it's also discontinuous at 3 because this point is not defined anywhere. Okay? So it's continuous everywhere except for those three values of x. In B, it says, what is the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right? Well, if we come in, here's negative 1. If we come in from the right-hand side, we see that the limit is 1. What's the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left? Well, from the left-hand side, it's 2. So therefore, that limit doesn't exist. On which intervals is the derivative negatively valued, or less than 0? Well, if you remember, that f prime is less than zero when f is decreasing, right? And so f is decreasing from negative one to one. And then it asks, what is the limit as x approaches zero? Well, as x approaches zero, if we come in from the left and the right, it looks like it's about negative one half right there. Make sense? Finally, is f continuous at one ex Explain briefly. Well, we already found the limit from the left and the right, and we'd have to say no because the limit does not exist. So we already kind of answered it up here, this up here. And then there was one other thing I wanted to talk about, and that's this type of a function here where you're asked to find a b or a number that makes the function continuous at a particular point. In this case, they want it to be continuous at x equals to 1. So I did number 10, and it's very simple. You know, you have two pieces here, right? And the problem child is always the restriction. So what you do is you take the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, because this would be coming toward 1 from the left, and that's bx squared minus 1. Then we take this 1 and we plug it in for x, so we get b times 1 minus 1, or b minus 1. Okay? We're going to do the same thing here, but we're going to say the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, because these are values greater than or equal to 1, so we'd have to come in from the right side of x. That means I'm going to plug a 1 into this x, so that's just equal to 1. So once you take the limit of each piece, then you set them equal to each other, and you solve. That's it. Okay. So the value of b that would make this thing continuous is when b is equal to 2. So we have 2x squared minus 1 and 2 here. And that would make this continuous at x equals to 1. Here's another one. Right? I take the limit of this as x approaches 1, so I'm not going to write that part down. I'm trying to save time. Um, so I'd have 2 minus 1, which is 1 minus b, right? I'm plugging in a 1 for every x. When I take that limit, as x approaches 1 from the left, I get 2 minus 1 minus b, or 1 minus b. Likewise, I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of this thing. So that's going to be 2, to the, 2 times e to the 1 minus 1, which is 2 times e to the 0, e to the 0 is 1 times 2 is 2, and then I set them equal. 1 minus b equals 2. If I subtract 1 from both sides, I get negative b equals 1, so b equals negative 1. So the value of b, or the number b, that would make this function continuous at x equals to 1 is negative 1. Okay, and 11 and 13 you'll do for homework.
And that's it. That's all there is to it. So you do need to know those three criterion by heart. They're very important. These three here, they're on page 140. Okay, so make sure you know what they mean. If you don't and you have questions, let me know. All right, I hope you all have a good night, and we'll see you on, what day is it? Friday.